In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to install a floating or outside mount J Geiger bracket using a J Geiger template. So after speaking with our designer, we decided that we wanted the fabric line to fall somewhere on the outside of this frame, preferably closest to the outside. So we did some rough math and we laid out just how far from the wall we needed to be which typically in most instances would be an inch and three quarters. But on this one, there's no hardware obstructing, so we're gonna go a little bit closer just to get it a little tighter to the window so there's less light gapping, which is completely understandable. Just make sure when you do this that you're monitoring how much of a roll you actually have, which means if you had 10 feet of fabric, how wide is the fabric gonna be when it's at the very top? So what we've done is I've come one and one half inches off of the wall and um, I've made my mark for my securing screw on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and run my laser and make sure that all of those lines line up to make sure that I will have a straight line. Now that I've set up my laser from my idler over to my drive side, I know that along this line, even though this is just a single window box, if I had multiple windows to conjoin with uh, couplers, this laser line would be the telltale so that I know exactly where center was across the board for all of my brackets. Once you've found the center of your bracket, you're going to want to drill your pilot holes. Using an eighth of an inch drill bit for the hanger bolt, a 5 64th drill bit for the securing screw, for the drive side, if you still need to drill a hole for the wire, you'll want to use a 5 16 inch drill bit. As discussed in the coupler video, we're going to use our hanger bolt driver to install our hanger bolt, leaving roughly 3 quarters of an inch of the machine thread exposed, and then the same for our securing screw, leaving roughly a quarter of an inch of it sticking out of the subsurface. Now just like we did before with the coupler bracket, we're going to put our sleeve on. Notice this sleeve's a little different. This is our round sleeve. Um, we still have a handful of these going out to dealer, so I want to make sure that you guys are getting to see what it looks like. Just like the last coupler installation, we want to try and get our set screw to be just at the very, very base of the hole to ensure a good fit. Once again, we're dealing with micro adjustments, so I'm just looking at where the set screw is inside of the hole. And if you look at it here, it's coming right out of the center. We all know that's a bad thing. It needs to be up just a little bit. So we'll go one full rotation, full rotation being one thirty second of an inch. We'll try it again. And it's starting to tighten up a little bit. That feels like it's going to do it. No. Nope. We need to make what's called a nano adjustment, which is just going up a half of a turn. We remove the set screw and then put the set screw back into the hole. Put the bracket back on. Now we've gone up roughly a 64th of an inch. Not much, but enough to really get it tight. And what I'm doing is I'm putting pressure onto the bracket, pushing it up towards the ceiling and I'm removing the set screw, not pushing it in. Don't forget, that will create a dimple in the back of the bracket. And nobody wants to see that. Once we get it tight to where our fingers start to hurt a little bit, we'll put it on the torque side of the wrench and just give it one more half turn. And you can see that really solidifies the bracket. So last thing to do is check for plumb and then any substrate that it might need to be squared to. Just go ahead and give it a little adjustment if you have to. Um, if it is too loose, just go ahead and do another nano or micro adjustment. But that's a good bracket. Now we'll install the motor side. All right. Same thing for this side, but obviously this one's a little different because we have the wire. You want to watch out for your wire placement. And notice what I have here. I have the ability to freely move my wire up and back. You want that with all Jay Geiger shade installations. You just want it because getting rid of that wire when you need to is always going to be a blessing. After we remove our aluminum shield, 
we can take all of the wires and just bunch them up so that they'll fit inside of the wireway on the uh, drive side bracket. Get them all to come through. And this is where a little help from a good buddy, the Allen wrench, can help out just to pick them out of place so that they don't want to stay seated in there. And now we're going to, once again, draw the set screw out, not creating a dimple on the back of it. And you can see when I go to the torque side of the Allen key, I'm bringing that set screw out to the face of the drive side bracket. And then just like the other side, you want to check it for plumb. Seems to be pretty good. And then check it for square on both sides. Might need to come in just a tick and that should do it. After making our final adjustment, a quarter inch hole for the Sinest 30 wire to fit through to come inside of the uh, drive bracket, we'll pull the rest of our wires through and we'll go ahead and set the bracket back into place. Pull the set screw back out. Once it gets tight, we're good. Now, a 14 gauge wire is a little larger than most shade wires, but it ensures no voltage drop. And the B-band connector we're using is pretty thin, so I'm just gonna take my crimpers and open that up until I've got about a circle. On the Sinest 30, the wire with the black stripe on it, which is this one, is positive so we'll connect that one first mind you my panel's not hot this wire doesn't go anywhere right now i want to wait until everything's hooked up just so i don't short any fuses at the panel once i get that twisted around a couple times i'll take my b-band connector and twist in the same direction until i'm covering all the jacket i don't want any of that copper or wire exposed at all just one crimp and then repeat for the negative. And the reason for the use of the Dolphin connector is because it is one of the few connectors that fit inside of our bracket without allowing any exposed wire. If you were to use tape right now, it could get warm and eventually wear off and you might short out the breaker or the fuse. Once you have all of your wires dressed up and made out, Go ahead and put them back into the bracket to where they're not anywhere near the outside face. You know that motor's gonna sit right on top there, so as long as they're behind there, they won't be exposed. And uh, if you can separate the positive from the negative, just ensuring once again that we don't have any, any shorting and any exposed copper that you have in here, any exposed wire that you have in here, you really want to uh, address just to make sure that uh, it can't touch any part of the positive or the negative wire. That looks good.